So have it right up to Chelsea, up to Minnows FC. Big up to every single one of you live and locked in. Hope everyone's doing well, winning life, all that jazz. First and foremost, guys, when you're all a smash to pieces, that like button. If you haven't smashed it already, smash it right now. Let's get them likes up straight away. Also, make sure you do subscribe to Minnows FC. We're on the road to 10K. Let's have it right. So let's get up there as quick as we can. Sharpish, yeah? And we've got the notification bell, ding dong, let's have it right, all that jazz, so make sure you do smash that so you know when we go live on the Minnows FC. We've got the Minnows FC Ultra membership, which is pinned at the top of the live chat and down below in the description, so make sure you have a butcher's of that as well. Respect to everyone, shout out to the chat, shout out to all the Minnows FC Ultras, man, landing it as usual, bruv, and I hope everyone's doing well, everyone's well, you know what I'm saying? Well, we should all be happy, shouldn't we? We're going to Wembley. We're going to Wembley for a semi-final, yeah? So I'm sure everyone's uh, buzzing. Are we buzzing? Is everyone buzzing? Um, so, guys, let me know in the chat. <coughs> We're going to start off. We have a very good one tonight. I'll, I'll guarantee it, bruv. Certified minerals will be landed. Um, but listen, salute to everyone. Do smash the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And uh, away we go. Let's have it right. And we ain't doing a Gary Neville, Tony Bloom impression of the seagull merchants have it right no we're going to land it for what it really is and there's no sugar coating on the minerals fc uh, so big up to everyone um uh, and we'll get we're going to start with this one we're going to start with this straight away we're going to go straight into it delve into the minerals and let's 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 land it let's land it everyone yeah respect to everyone let's go that is big because in the program you don't have the program here the today, thank you, boss. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Because people say, oh, big squad. But do you see the names? Under 18, under 18, under 18, under 18, under 21, under 21, under 21. And sometimes people you can confuse you. No, big squad. Do you know why we use too many and we put here? Because we use these guys. Few minutes in Carabao Cup, in the FA Cup, or in Premier League, because of the circumstance. It's only no. Sometimes people want to talk like uh, want to be nice. Uh, come on, we have yes, because we are not going to hide nothing. Big squad is long, because we had too many injured players on the first team, and we should use all the the kit that are helping us. Second for second time in this in the FA Cup, Carabao Cup and the FA Cup on Wembley. That is always when I arrive to England on Southampton say no, we need to go to in, uh, to Wembley, we need to go to Wembley, Southampton. And they told them we need to go to Wembley, we need to go to Wembley. And now look in in nine months in the two different competition, we got Wembley and we need to enjoy and we need to trust more. I really believe. I am a person, very positive person. I really believe in our fans. I really believe in the club and really believe the most important in the staff that we have today because all the staff is, you know, is fantastic. And of course, in our player, young, but I am enjoying a lot trying to help them to achieve what they, they want. And of course, all together, we will succeed, no, no doubt. Well, let's have it right, yeah. Old bottle Tino's rattled, bruv, yeah? Say it for what it is. Ask for the programme, the match programme, against the championship side Leicester to look at the difference in the list of players and name that they're all 18, 19, 20, 22, all this, yeah? All right. Isn't our entire squad an average age of 20-odd years old anyway? Is this a joke? Like, what does Poch think? Does he think that he's going to get a bunch of experience in the summer? <laughs> no, mate, he's a long way from that super gamer. You ain't getting that. So get used to it, Poch, if you're still in the job, that is. Let's have it right. But you ain't going to get any experience. You're going to have to keep managing a bunch of kids because that's all we got and that's all these clown legs want to do is buy a bunch of kids. And they've obviously broadcasted as we've known for a year, that they're going to bring in 22-year-olds, 21-year-olds, 18-year-olds, 15-year-olds of world-class minerals for two in every position, all right? So bringing that up is, is just a joke. 
it's an insult. An insult of me. I, I take that as an insult because I know the situation at the football club. And you're literally trying to make an excuse that we've got a bunch of young kids because we've got injuries. What injuries, mate? Someone explain to me what injuries we've got. Badashile? Give me a break, bruv. What's he got? What experience has he got? Nothing. All right? Cole will. Cole will. Lucky to be playing first team football for Chelsea Football Club because if we had our Champions League winning team, pretty much his entire squad, Boris James, Thiago Silva, and Chilwell, don't get in it. All right. And then on top of that, we've got only Reese James and Nkunku, where you want to talk about injuries. Nkunku hasn't played what? He's played 30 minutes since pre season. 30 minutes. That's it. Great. What's the benchmark? There ain't none. We don't know what minerals he's going to bring to Chelsea. So forget that. And Kunku is still a question mark. Reese James, we know, is proven pedigree. But the geese hasn't played all season. So for the whole season up to now, he hasn't had Nkunku and he hasn't had Reese James, who are the key injuries. All right? I don't want to hear that excuse. Bottle job mentality. And then he says, oh, it's Spurs at Southampton. Well, we must get to Wembley. We must get to Wembley. Well, we have in the last, you know, last however months, we've got to Wembley twice. Yeah. Well, what happened the first time round at Wembley? We bottled it. Why? Why did we bottle it? We lost to Liverpool of an air merchant's C team full of kids. Literally. And now we're going to Wembley for a semi-final, not a final, a semi-final. So these, these, what he comes out with is a load of waffle. What he's actually saying is, I'm not the one to blame, just like Jellyfish Potter. I'm not the problem. And he's not really the problem. You see, this isn't a Poch issue. The bottom line is this. Poch will never be accepted at Chelsea. And that's a fact. It doesn't matter if he wins an FA Cup. It doesn't matter if he gets his Champions League football. It doesn't matter. Or it's the other way around. We finish where we are mid-table, which is the reality. And we don't win an FA Cup. We don't win anything. We don't get Europe. No one's going to accept him either way. Because why? He's proper Spursy. He's an ex-Spurs gaffer. So you're never going to have the connection with the fans. Just like Rafa's Spanish waiter Benitez, bruv. That's the reality. That's what it is. You know? So I don't understand all this. And this fella, Dean, clearly tapped up the merchant as you like, bruv. Going, oh, how can you not like this guy? He just gets it. Gets fucking what? Guess what? The geezers flip-flop more than the Havanas, bruv, that you wear on the beach, yeah? Literally, comes in, this is Chelsea, most successful club. We're here to win. We're here to challenge. I want to win the Premier League. I want to win the Caribbean Cup. I want to win the FA Cup. I want to play Champions League. Bottles it. And then goes back to, oh, no, you know, this is a process. Trust the process. To then go, oh, mid-tables are reality. To then go and force feed the project. No, he don't get it. He gets it, what the clowns get. And what the clowns want him to get, that's what he gets. He doesn't get Chelsea. He's not Chelsea. He never will be Chelsea. And that's the fucking reality of the situation. So we're going to start off on that narrative. We're going to start off with that tone, bruv. Because I'm sick to death of this nonsense. And I'm not even blaming Pochettino. Yeah? I'm not even blaming him. He's been dealt this shit hand and this squad. And this squad is nowhere near what we had before. The standards are in the mud. Everything's in the mud, as we know it. All right. And we're going to talk about the game. I'm going to bring up the Liverpool United game as well. And we're going to land the minerals there. There's plenty to talk about. It was a wonderful day of football yesterday. Absolutely wonderful day of football. FA Cup's magic. You know, let's have it right. He's never won it. Never won the FA Cup. Well, Chelsea's won many FA Cups. Let's have it right. We It's standard procedure for Chelsea Football Club to get into to semi-finals and finals and go to Wembley, but also go and win it as well. It's standard procedure for Chelsea to be in these competitions and land the damn minerals, but yeah. So every single one of you in here, respect to everyone, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button. You know the deal. You know what's going to be landed, and we're going to land it right now. So we talk about the game. We played Chelsea. Chelsea played uh, Leicester City, Championship side, sitting top of the table in the Championship. Um, no Jamie Vardy. Some injuries, so a little sort of wounded wolves, if you like. Um, but the reality is, Chelsea should be steamrolling this team with the amount of quality that we got. We've had a 10 out of 10 window to melt, say. Um, we should be landing down minerals and steamrolling this championship side at home at the bridge against Leicester City. So, have it right. 
Um, so, first half, we start off. Not bad. We get the first goal. Nico Jackson. Um, credit to him. I'll give credit to him. He did fight for the 90 minutes. And he played the ball across. And we got Brillo Pad getting his first ever goal for Chelsea Football Club. Is that it right? Um, this guy scores a goal, a nice tap in, and we go 1-0 up. Relaxes the nerves. The stats are, every time Chelsea goes ahead in a game, the chances are we go and win the game. I think we've lost one game since we've gone ahead. So you know, when we go behind in a game, it's down and down and in the mud for Chelsea because the mentality is not there, the experience ain't there and all that. But we went ahead, 1-0 up, fantastic. Fair play. You know, you land the minerals. You land the minerals. Paul, what is it? Palmer. Palmer. Plays in. A lovely ball. Gusto. Crosses it in. Both on the counter. Both goals on the counter. But this one's not a goal. This one's a penalty. And who does it fall to? It falls to Raheem Sterling. Raheem Sterling forces the Leicester defender to foul him in the box. And we get a penalty, bro. Yeah? Let's have it right. We got a penalty. Fantastic. Time to go 2-0 up. Cole Palmer picks up the ball. Everyone knows that Cole Palmer is a penalty taker at Chelsea. That's why he's got such great GNA, because he takes penalties. Right? Sterling wants the ball. Sterling takes the ball. Cole Palmer throws him the ball. Whatever way you want to flip the script, bro. All right, whatever agenda you want to throw. But Sterling wanted to bag the goal. He wanted the penalty. He takes the penalty, fluffs his lines, should have been turning up. It's not. That's the reality. All right. Maybe if Cole Palmer takes it, there's no guarantees. There's never a guarantee of a penalty. But the chances are there's a high probability that Cole Palmer puts the ball in there and we go turn it up. The agenda starts on Sterling, misses that penalty. All right. He's missed the penalty. We still should be winning this game. We, sh we, sh we should still be in control of this game, irrespective, bro. Irrespective. We get another chance. Casado plays a lovely through ball to Sterling. It's a credit to Casado. And it goes to Raheem Sterling. Raheem Sterling, one on one, fluffs his lines, goes wide. Should have scored another one there. So we should have had three, we should have been three nil up there. Three nil up. But we didn't. We're still one nil up. And that's the reality situation. Then the crowd and everyone's getting on Raheem Sterling. Because he's our experience. He should be lead, putting, leading the by example and all this waffle. All right. Then we get, I think Leicester get the ball, um, gets played out. What does Raheem Sterling do? He's pissed off. He anticipates it. He steals the ball. He runs and charges down the left-hand side. Crosses it in to assist beautifully. Cole Palmer, 2 nil up. He made amends. Redemption, if you like. Let's have it right. He landed it there to go 2 nil up. And that's all you can ask for. Yes, he didn't score the penalty. Yes, he fluffed his line one-on-one. -on -one. How many times these players, these kids, fluff their lines, mate? All season. And you want to come at Sterling. Now, I'm going to be in defence of Sterling. Because at the end of the day, he's all the, all the experience that we got up front. We haven't got any other experience. And the other experience is Thiago Silva at the back, and he's been exiled. He's benched and doesn't even get to play. And we'll get on to Thiago Silva. Let's have it right. Yeah? But the bottom line is this. We go 2-0 up, half-time, happy days. The game, in my opinion, the game's dead and buried. The game should be killed now. Le Leicester had nothing. Leicester had nothing in their locker. You could tell, bro. They were out of their depth. They didn't know how to get back in the game. <laughs> they didn't know how to get back in the game. Then the second half comes. Second half, let's have it right. Yeah, second half. And we get the probably one of the worst own goals I've ever seen in football. All right? Where you get disaster, disaster, bruv. Smashing it home. For one, for one thing, what the hell is he panicking like that? Secondly, why is he rifling it back? And thirdly, what the hell is Sanchez doing so far off his line, bruv? What does he think? He's a defender now? Why is, Sil Why is Sanchez even playing? This guy's pants, bruv. He was Brighton, Seagull Merchant's third-choice keeper. And this guy's taking over Petrovic in a big game in the FA Cup where we have to get to Wembley, all right? And yes, we did, but a, well, one here on a nutsack, 
All right. But the bottom line is this disaster, disaster, man. If you ever label this guy comparing him to John Terry, you should be criminally banged up, bro. Yeah, you understand? You should be banged up for life. Life sentence of no, never coming out with a, a single football opinion in your life, bro. All right. How you can even compare these two is an absolute criminal offense. It's blasphemy to John Terry, bro. Yeah. All right. This is a joke. Absolute joke. So what you've done there is literally just given Leicester the keys to get back in the game because 2-0, they're dead and buried. And then the, the script flips, bro. Literally flips. What happens? You've got Harry fucking Exposey Winks, who Pochettino knows very well. Let's have it right. Playing like he's fucking prime shabby, bro, in the Esther, in the midfield, running the midfield, running the game, all right? Leicester getting all the possession, pushing us back, and we go in, we go in like a snail in its shell, bro, all right? And you go, why? What What's happening? Why, why are Leicester, all of a sudden, the momentum's with Leicester? One nil. And then they get, what's his name? I have to write this geezer's name down. This guy's, this guy's name's a joke, bro. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> his name, bro. This guy. <laughs> what is this guy's name, bro? In DD, DD, whatever. Let's call him DD, bro. This guy comes out of a world, world, worldy, bro. Yeah. Absolute worldy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> This guy literally has gusto like a French cuisine on a silver platter, bruv. You know, eating him up like it's, it's nothing. Yeah? Like eggs Benedict for breakfast. Gusto got done like a kipper. Let's have it right and say it for what it is. Reese James doesn't get done now. No chance, bruv. All right? DD, top bins, curler, lovely goal. All right? 2-2. Two, two. The game is flipped on its head. The nerves start to settle in. The players don't know who to look to. Same old story at Chelsea, bro. Same old story. Story of the season. All right? And then you got Pochettino and his team laughing at the second goal. Laughing. What are we laughing at? What the fuck is there to laugh at? What's his mentality, bro? Mavi Didi, that's it. Mavi Didi, whatever. All right? Great goal. Credit to him. All right? But he's criminal that he's allowed to take that, that shot and score a goal, mate. Yeah? And go 2-2. Two, two. And it's 2-2 two, two now. Leicester pushing on. Momentum's with Leicester. Clear as day. You can see Leicester winning this. They're, they're, their fans are giving it all the big and £38 worth of FA Cup magic. You know what I'm saying? Literally. All right? And then who's there? You've got Raheem Sterling. Raheem Sterling plays a lovely ball at Jackson. Jackson flicks it past that, that defender and he's heading one-on-one. -on -one. And then what happens? He gets what we thought was a penalty, and it wasn't. It was a free kick out of the box. But their defender gets sent off. They get the red card. That's where the game flips again. Because, again, Chelsea Football Club and these young kids and this gaffer and these clowns get saved by a red card, wounding these foxes from 11 foxes to 10 foxes. And then we get Reem Sterling, who takes the ball, and the crowd are on him. To take that free kick, and that free kick goes to Mars, bro. Yeah, literally hits the Super Frankie Lampard sign. Everyone going disrespectful to Super Frankie Lampard. I don't think he intended to hit Lampy's, uh, Lampy's, um, and Banner, but let's have it right. That's what he did, you know. And that was it. Everyone's screaming, get him off. People are booing him, bro. People booing Raheem Sterling. We didn't score from that. He's still 2 2. And I have to give a shout out to Mudrick because I thought Mudrick in the 10 was actually our best player in the game up to the point he got substitute, substituted off. And everyone's screaming that Mudrick got set, taken off. The reality is he did fade out of the game. Leicester were dominating. Um, they got the 2 2 and, and, and Poch needed to make a change. And Mudrick hasn't had enough minutes. The guy doesn't get played. As he's going to develop, we don't know. But there's clearly some minerals there. He's proven that he's got some minerals there. But he's not getting played to be developed. He gets taken off because he's probably tired. I, I, I agree with that. I do agree with that. Do I agree with Sterling staying on? Not really. But Poch ain't got nothing on the bench. What's he got on the bench? Madueke, what's he proven? Not a lot. Chukameka, he's just come back. So you can't really throw him in. You got no backup striker, so Jackson has to play. So you're kind of stuck there to play Sterling. So you got some sort of, you know, ace in the ace in the pack, so to speak, for him to throw on later on. See how the game goes. He made the right decision, you know. He wanted to flip it and change the change the game a little bit. So he brings on Madueke, bro. Madueke has a little chance, doesn't quite make it. 
But Raheem Sterling, chance for him to get sent off, get taken off. Screaming, get him off. You don't know what you're doing to the gaffer. All right? And he does know what he's doing. He's not experienced. He's not elite. We know all this about Pochettino. I mean, it's just like common knowledge, bub, these days. Yeah. But the reality of the situation is Chelsea were under the cosh until that red card. And it always takes something like that for Chelsea uh, feel like you can get back in the game. Because I'll be real, I was worried. And I thought Leicester were going to go ahead and knock us out of this, this, this cup tie. That's the reality of the situation. But, but, that's where the game flipped. And it flipped in a way where Chelsea could now pile the pressure on. Chelsea now started to build momentum and try and get a, try and create something, even though it's against a low block Leicester who are holding out for extra time, holding out for penalties more than likely. And I don't blame them, bruv. Yeah, so have it right. But we have to question why, why did we allow Leicester to play the way they did when they had 10 men, uh, 11 men on the pitch? Why do you have to rely on a red card for us to now start playing again to try and create create something? And all of our goals or all of our created activity was on the, the counter from Leicester having possession majority of the time. So it's not actually possession-based football. I have to question that. Because we should be controlling games. We should have some sort of identity. We should be playing in a certain way. Irrespective. Sterling, the agenda's on him. Full throttle, bro. Yeah? And then we go on to the changes. He brings on Chukameke. Takes off Kukurela. He wants to go for it. He wants to finish it in 90 minutes. That's the right attitude. He took off Sterling as well. You know what I'm saying? And then what happens? We get a moment of individual brilliance and magic from Cole Palmer with that back flick. Uchukameka picks up the ball, plays it at Cole Palmer. He makes the run off, off Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer makes a, a magical back flick. Absolute sublime minerals landed there. Credit to the kid because he's been the best player at Chelsea. All right. He's landed there in minerals. And that was the decisive moment of brilliance for Chukameka to just place it and slot it. 3-2, game, set, match. Leicester ain't coming back. We're through to semi-final. We're going to Wembley. And that's that's exactly what should have been done. But why? Why are we wetting ourselves? Why are we nervous at Stamford Bridge every time we play a game? Why are we putting ourselves through this situation? Because we don't have a core. We don't have balance. We don't have experience. And we've got so-called injuries. It's a load of waffle. All right? The reality is this squad has been constructed by a bunch of AI scouting merchants, bruv. Data FC merchants, clowns, yeah? And we'll get on to that. And then we get Muduweke with another moment of brilliance. Again, individual brilliance where the game's dead. Leicester are dead and buried mentally, physically. They know they're going out. And he does a few little uh, dribbles here and there, gets out. Still looks like a grasshopper flat-footed for me. Um, and, and, and hits it absolutely superbly. Wonder goal, but a wonder goal, it doesn't actually amount to anything or have any real substance. It's just like a, 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 a consolation of, of, of lovely minerals landing. That's all it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was just a lovely goal to watch, but it wasn't like a winning goal, bro. The winning goal was Cole Palmer's backflip and Chukameka landing it. That's it. And Chukameka, credit to him. He's just come back. He's got nice technical ability. He ha he could he could have some sort of minerals. But again, it's always that same old thing, magic roundabout of potential, bro. And that's what we got at Chelsea. But anyway, we win the game. There's booze when Sterling got taken off. Listen, let's have it fucking right, yeah? I, for myself, I speak. I've never booed one Chelsea player in a, ch in a shirt. Never a player in blue. I won't boo a player. No chance, right? I never even booed that cement-booted fraud, bro, that absolutely shat and ratted on our football club. I never booed him. I stopped chanting his name. That's what I did. I still celebrated the goals that he scored. But the bottom line is I never booed him. And he was a rat. Sterling's not a rat. You can't blame Sterling for being on 325 grand a week. You can't blame Sterling for everything that happens. You can't say he's not a lead. You know, he should be leading this team. He's the experience. When has Sterling ever been a leader in any team? He's not a leader. He has to set by example in training and, and off the pitch some sort of standards at this football club because the standards are in the gutter, bro. Yeah. But the bottom line is this. Yeah. Sterling shouldn't be booed. 
All right. The guy got us the assist. He won us a penalty. He did certain things right, but he does a lot of things not so right, bro. All right. But it's inconsistency. The guy's trying to get inconsistency. But how can he get consistency in an inconsistent team, in an unbalanced team? Where's this energy? Why is all the agenda on just Raheem Sterling, bro? I don't I don't agree with that. And it's wrong. And it's the same old fucking wrong-uns that fed, fed a gender on Havertz or fed a gender on Mount or fed a gender on Georgina and Kovacic and all these players, all right? The bottom line is this. Without Sterling, think about his goals this is his season. We would be much lower than where we are in the league table and we wouldn't get him through in certain cup competitions, bro. Yeah? So show some respect to him. And the fact of the matter is, people forget, right? They go on about mental health. Well, this, this player has been getting booed. Not This is not the first time he's been booed. He's been booed again, all right? He's been booed before in previous games. I can't remember the game it was, but he was booed at that game, all right? What do you think that affects that player mentally? Now, Sterling is, is, a, is a strong lad. He can take it. He's a Premier League multiple winner. He's a winner. He's an England international. He's played in the biggest games, all right? He can take it. But one thing is a hum on a humane level, to be booed by your own supporters is outright dis disgraceful. You shouldn't be doing that. And that is a fact, all right? If you're going to boo anyone, all right, go and boo the cement booted rat for ratting on our football club. Or what about William Gallus when he said he he's happy to score an own goal when he played for Chelsea? You boo that. But you don't boo a player that's trying, a player that's been basically set up with what? What around him, you know, what standards, what level of quality, what is he, is he now there to uh, uh, be the teacher in kindergarten? He's there to uh, hold the hands of all these kids, that all the experience has got to be uh, uh, transferred from Sterling onto these kids because they've got nothing else to look up to. But like I say, Sterling, even at Manchester City, was never that leader. He was never the star player. And we didn't buy him at Chelsea to be the star player. We bought him to add and complement what we had. And at Man City, he complemented the world-class minerals they had in their team. But they didn't just rely on Sterling. He had absolute ballers around him. He had a system. The system was built for him, and, and well, not for him, but suited him. And Pep knew that. Where's the system built for Sterling here? Where's it built for any player? Where's the patterns of play? Where's the identity? Where's the progression? I don't see it. And I'll tell you why we don't see it. It's very simple. Well, what do you think happens when you go out and use AI scouting and data and that's all you use to build a team? You're building a team of individuals based on data. You're not building a team. You're not building a team with a gaffer and a structure to build an identity, to build a style of pay, to build a culture. You're building based on data and AI. So all you're going to get is individual brilliance. That's all you're going to rely upon. And that's football manager mentality. It's, 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 it's fantasy. And that's the fact of the matter, bruv. Yeah? Now, Sterling's a senior player. If he wants to take that penalty, where it's down to the gaffer in their dressing room and the captain who's on the pitch, which is Conor Gallagher, to say no, like Asby did, all right, and like John Telly has in many occasions, bro. All right. Where Drogba wanted that penalty and Lampard said, I'm the penalty taker. And Drogba would have got the golden boot. That's the mentality. We didn't have that because we don't have that at Chelsea. There's no leadership. There's no discipline. There's no standards. There's no benchmark. So you're going to have all this circus and pantomime of Sterling taking the penalty. When really, if Cole Palmer's the penalty taker, then Cole Palmer should be taking the penalty. End of discussion. No debate, bro. All right? But that didn't happen. And if that's the case, Cole Palmer should be standing up, pulling Conor Gallagher, who's the captain, and say, what's going on here, Capo? Like, I should be taking the penalty. This is what's set by the gaffer. But we don't have that. We don't have minerals. We don't have experience. We don't have any men in this team, bro. Sterling's a man in this team. He's the only man in this team, bro. All right? And yet... You're expecting him to be the leader and, and he's never been a leader ever in his, his career, bruv. He's not a captain. He's not a leader. So stop putting that on him. It's because we haven't got any in our team that you're directing all that energy onto Sterling. Now, I'm there to support Sterling when he did have a stinker. He had a stinker yesterday. 
It was a shocking performance, bruv. And any on any other given day, he should be he should be hooked off at half time or or. But then, like I say, what's on the bench? What are you relying upon? You know, it's it's, it's a catch twenty two situation, bruv. You know what I'm saying? People need to understand this, and they don't. They just want to throw their agenda. The bottom line is never boo your player. What does that show about the fan base? Booing a player, bruv. What does that show? It's poor, bruv. That's not supporting your players and your team. Like all these other young kids, yeah, have been any better than Sterling. Like all these kids are landing it. Oh, they're so world class. Look where we are sitting fucking 11th in the table. Bottling a Carabao Cup final against Klopp's C team bunch of kids. Not playing any European football, not having any European experience, not having hardly any Premier League experience. And these guys haven't been landing minerals. These guys have been poor, bruv, inconsistent. But yet they don't get, they get all the backing through the roof, bruv. And all your star boys that you, you love to, to prop and this and that. You prop players when they deserve to be praised and when they land it and they play for the badge and they're consistent and they deliver and they prove it. And none of these players have done that up to this point. Hardly any of these players have done it. All right? So use the same energy when you're booing a Sterling. Where are you not? Why are you not booing all the other players that have been dog shit? Because you won't do that. Because your agenda doesn't allow you to do that. But that's the reality. They're the facts. It's very simple. Just don't boo. If you boo anyone, you should be booing the absolute wrong ones at our football club, running this football club. You should be booing Meatloaf Bowley, Siri Merchant of Barley, Clown Lake. Blue Code 22. That's who you should be booing. All the players and the gaffer, they're the ones that put that on the pitch. But you don't do that. You should be chanting Roman Abramovich's name. That's who you should be booing. The, the owners of this football club that have destroyed us. Because the reality is we're facing Manchester City. And let's be real. Does everyone expect us to beat Manchester City? Oh, but don't worry. We always turn up against Manchester City. Yeah. Have we beaten them? No, we haven't beaten them. We've drawn. We've always played an under par Man City. Do you think Man City are going to be under par? Do you think they're not going to be up for it? With their De Bruyne's and Haaland's and Bernardo Silva back fit now. You think we're going to have a better chance playing them now when we had the two opportunities to beat them and we couldn't even get it over the line and they were weakened then? They didn't even have full fit, full fit squad. Yeah? They don't even have Grealish as well. So that's delusion, bruv. Yeah? Maybe the magic the FA Cup will help us get the final. And then the chances are, who are we going to play? Man United in the final. Are we going to beat them as well? So the reality is, we ain't winning the FA Cup. We're not going to get European football. And that's been a realist. We can all pray and hope that Chelsea do do that because we want to win a trophy. We want some sort of success out of this absolutely abysmal season, a failure of a season, a failure of two seasons, in fact, a failure of two years under this clown lake, right? That's the reality situation, yeah? Now, everybody in here, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, respect to everyone in here, land the minerals, get in the chat and keep landing it. Today it's came out, we're looking at a 20-year-old striker called Bakayoko, who's up for 40 million, 45 million. You know, it's the same old. You're not buying proven pedigree. You're buying younger players based on data and AI. I'm sick of it, bruv. More kids. Like the state of us now, ain't it? He's not, is, is it delivering? Is it delivering? People go, oh, look at Cole Palmer. He's close to 30 GA. Yeah, but where are we? Where are we in the table? What are we winning? Where are we progressing to? It means nothing. Stats, stats don't mean nothing. Stats are deceiving, bruv. If he gets 30 GA and we make top four and we win an FA Cup, and we're challenging at some sort of level, then you can say, yes, fantastic, minerals landing properly. This is not, this is fraudulent. It's bullshit.
This is where you know your standards are so far in the mud that you've got to prop stats that mean nothing at all whatsoever, bro. Yeah. And this is this is the same old situation at Chelsea, bro. You know what I mean? And I'm sick to death of hearing Pochettino. This is what Pochettino says, yeah. This is what he says. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm just done with it, man. He always talks this crap, bruv. Yeah? He comes out and he goes, we're in a process to build. What the fans want is to go to Wembley and, 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 and that we achieved. Yeah, go to Wembley and win, mate. They need to trust me to manage in a way I think is best way for the club. We need to respect their opinion as much as they need to respect my decision. But your decisions are there. You know, you can only play this team that you're playing. You haven't got options. You don't have experience. So I don't expect what the supporters want anyway. What's he got off the bench, bruv? What's he got in the squad? You got disaster making that calamity, right? Thiago Silva sitting on the bench, disgusted, right? Exiled because he won't sign an NDA. And they're the facts of the, re the, the, the reality. Yeah, facts, bruv, all right? Thiago Silva, if he's on that pitch, that doesn't happen. That situation doesn't happen. And you melt false agenda on Thiago Silva. Look at the stats with Thiago Silva. Look at the stats without Thiago Silva. All I know is if Thiago Silva's in that Carabao Cup final, like Van Dijk was leading those kids as a captain, we would win that game. All right? But he was exiled on the bench, not even used in extra time. And the same old situation in the FA Cup. And he's not going to play the FA Cup final or semi-final, bruv. Yeah? This process is not a process. This is a process for making money. It's not a process for building an identity culture and a way of playing in a football, a football team that's there to dominate and go and win, bruv. Because if that was the case, you don't gut out an entire winning Champions League team. It's just, it's just absolutely backwards. It's backwards way of thinking. It's cancel. It's cancel culture, bruv. All right? To what? Create your own culture. What's that culture? To make pound notes. That's all it is. And you're still not going to go and buy any more, buy any experience whatsoever. Your wage structure won't allow it. So it's the same old narrative. And this is the truth. I always keep it real. Win, lose or draw. I will always speak like this because as far as I'm concerned, I don't see any development. We are an absolute state. We're a shambles. We're all over the gaff. And Potch has been working with these players, moaning about two key players injured, all right, that haven't even played all season. So you can't even use that excuse. And yet we still don't see an identity. We still don't see a way of playing, bro. I don't see it. If you see it, please tell me. Tell me in the chat what you see, bro. Yeah. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you see. Because I don't know, maybe I need Lee Gunner's old Arsene Wenger specs to see this process, bruv. Or to try and trust this nonsense of a process. Because there is no process for footballing reasons. It's a process for monetary reasons. And that's why we are where we are. Because they're not building a team to win, bruv. Yeah. And it's true. When we put on those specs, all we see is a circus and clowns. That's what we see. Do you know what someone sent me yesterday? Look what someone sent me yesterday, people, yeah? Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me get it up, bruv. This was in the ground. Yeah? This was in the ground. Let me go closer so you can all see. What does it say? It's already starting. People are... Knowing what's happening at this football club, realise what's running our football club, knowing that we are absolutely in the gutter and we are nowhere near competing and we got Clown Lake out stickers, bruv. We got Roman Abramovich stickers landed in the ground, bruv. Yeah? Let's put it up for you, everyone to see. Get them out. We want our Chelsea back. Let's have it right. Yeah? Different one now. So, people, don't... Uh, listen, all the minerals of Sultras, bruv. It's always going to happen, bruv. The Chelsea supporters know what's happening, yeah? It's just that the results right now, as always, mask the reality of the situation, yeah? Don't think for one second that the supporters are... The true, die-hard supporters are accepting this nonsense, bruv. 
Yeah. It's always Clown Lake out, bruv. Nothing changes. And you get all these melts on the timeline calling me a toxic agenda merchant, yeah? When all I do is want the best for my football club, been calling out for over a year, and you want to have the audacity to come on Twitter and call it out. Call out your goldfishes, your Alex Goldfish, and all these wrongings in the, in the fan base. Never put my name with those names, bruv. Never. Because I'm the one that's calling them out for what they do, for not saying it for what it really is, and hiding behind absolute false narratives, bruv, that they know are false, that they know are lies. So have it right. I'm not that geezer. So you get in the bin, get in the woods, yeah? And, and, and run along with Clown Lake, you little Clown Lake wrong'uns, little merchants, bruv. Listen, it's a big move in the game to see that happening at the bridge. That serious move, serious steps towards what's going to happen. And I want to bring up and shout out a legend at Chelsea. Yeah. Absolute legend at Chelsea. Um, and everyone will know Chidge. Everyone knows Stamford Chidge. Let's have it right. Chelsea fan cast. Yeah. Land of Dan Minerals. Look at his T-shirt, guys. Look at his T-shirt. He's made that. If they sell Connor, we riot. So have it right. He's drinking in the minerals. He's drinking in the minerals there. Yeah? And he's landing down minerals. Love that. And that is going to be the moment. I'm telling you now. Because they're going to sell Connor Gallagher. That's going to be the moment that the, the supporters will turn, fully turn. And it's going to be... Forget all the little Twitter virgins and little agenda merchants that don't know nothing about nothing, bruv, because they're just clown like little brown and like minions, bruv. Gala dog, bruv. You sell in, bruv. We're in the bin as a football club. We've got no standards, no Chelsea DNA, and we will riot, bruv. Let's have it right. Yeah. So shout out to Chidge, man. That's a quality t shirt, and I'm going to have to get myself one of them. And I'll have to get in touch with him to find out how I can get one of those t shirts, because I'll be landing it and I'll wear it on the stream, bruv. Let's have it right. Yeah. We'll promote that. We'll promote those minerals. Yeah. These are the these are the fucking minerals landing, bruv. These are the these are the true facts. These are the true facts. You know, I don't sugarcoat, mate. Yeah, there's nothing to sugarcoat. It's lovely. We're going to Wembley. We're going to semi-final. But we have to get through Manchester City, an impossible task. Everyone's predicting City. We are the underdogs. I'm used to Chelsea being the underdogs anyway, even when we're the most dominant, bruv. We've been underdogs and we still land a mineral, bro. But this team ain't nowhere near these teams that we've had previously at Chelsea. So underdogs are truly underdogs, bro. Yeah, it'll be like Leicester coming to our ground and they still outplayed us in certain moments of that game, bro. Yeah. Which leads me on to levels. Understanding where Chelsea Football Club are and where other clubs that are above us are, yeah? So let's say it for what it is. The game I witnessed, Liverpool, uh, Manchester United v Liverpool, right? That game goes down as one of the greatest games in FA Cup history. That could go up top top five games in FA Cup history. One of the great, great games, bruv. Absolutely world-class game, yeah? That is what you call levels. Now, Manchester United... We all know are in the gutter, but Chelsea are further in the gutter. We're in the sewage. But yet our fan base was coming out, the deluded ones, saying Man United are worse than Chelsea. I don't think so somehow. I don't think so. Because what did they go and do? They went and won 4-3 against the veneer merchants, the Liverpool, bruv. Yeah? And a strong Liverpool team. They had Sabosky, they had Matt Alistair, they had Mohamed Salah, they had Nunes, they had Robinson. They had all their players, Van Dijk. They had Diaz, a much stronger fucking team than we played them in the Carabao Cup final. Let that sink in, yeah? They played a strong Liverpool team at Old Trafford. They went 1-0 up with Scott McTominay. Then the game gets flipped, 2-1. Mohamed Salah McAllister scores a goal. McAllister from the Seagull Merchants, 38 million. We're paying 115 million for Casado, 70 million for Cucurella, and we can't land no minerals, bruv. Cucurella's got his first ever goal for Chelsea. Casado's still not got one goal or assist for Chelsea Football Club. McAllister's landing the damn minerals, bruv. All right? At 
Old Trafford, the magnitude of Man United playing Liverpool, the heritage with that game, through the roof, bruv, if you're a football man. So it doesn't matter what Man United players come out, doesn't matter what Liverpool players come out, you have to play for that badge. You have to make sure you win that game. Man United go 2-1 down. They go second half. Balled hard, struggling, bruv. Doesn't know. Man United look lost, bruv. They lose the midfield. They bring on Ericsson. Try and pull some strings. He plays a lovely ball to uh, Rashford. Rashford bot bottles it, bruv. They bring on Anthony. Anthony turns into the reincarnation of Neymar Jr., bruv. All right. Back to goal. Turns, smashes it home. 2-2, bruv. You're going extra time. They pulled it out of the bag. They're climbing Mount Everest, bruv. Liverpool with the little hobbit, Elliot, comes and scores. Deflected goal. They go 3-2 up in extra time. 3-2 up in extra time. You think they've done it? Vinnie Merch is like fist pumping, fist pumping, fist pumping, bruv. Vinnie's are out, bruv. Shining, Colgate, gleaming, bruv. Whitening, literally promoting everything. Invisalign, bruv. He's promoting every, every toothpaste that's out there worldwide, bruv. All right, he's thinking we've done it. We've done them. The Busby babes are in the mud. Nah, mate. Nah. What does he do? What does Bald Hog do? 15 minutes left to play. 15 minutes to play. He's already brought on Ahmad. He's brought on Ahmad. Yeah. And if anyone saw, before Ahmad came on, Minnell's man was speaking to him. Psyching him up. He goes on that pitch, second half of extra time. And who comes on the pitch? Mason Mount. Hasn't played for four months. Gets thrown into this intense, fast-paced, derby, literally, heritage game. And what happens? The intensity... The fight, the reading, the direction in that midfield comes to life again because they were struggling. Maino, 18 years old, absolutely top, top player. I'll say this. He looks a top player, a young age, and he'll be the future at their football club. Lovely little player. But he was tired. McTominay, he's not Man United level, but he comes in with his goals. He comes in with his clutch goals. He comes in, he knows what it means to play for Manchester United. He's an academy prospect. All that jazz, yeah? All right? But Mount number seven comes on, not match fit. Hasn't played for four months. Gets straight stuck in. Understands the game. He's there on Van Dyke in the penalty box from a, penalty box from a Liverpool corner with two other dippers, and he's in the middle of it like a pit bull, bruv. They make nothing out. Ball goes out. Ahmed takes the ball, gives it to Ganacho. Ganacho goes all the way, plays it to Ahmed. He scores and places a goal. 4 3 winner, bruv. That's the game changer. And that's it. They win the game. Veneer Merchant's in the mud, bruv. Yeah, what's he fist punching now? He's fist punching like he's fist punching slosh pot wet, bruv. That's all he is. And when he goes in, he can't get back out. It's like a bowling ball, bruv. Yeah, there's nothing. A fist punch, bruv. The knees are all knocked out. The geezer needs to go back to Turkey, get his, his go to the dentist chair and get him all redone, bruv. Because it's, it's a bloodbath now at Old Trafford. Yeah? Because Mason Mount, whether you like it or not, directing players, change that game. Reignited something that United were missing. Experience to come on. That's what happened in this game. In those fine margins. Where is that at Chelsea Football Club when we played them in the final? Where is that experience? Where's that level? Where's that reading? Where's that, where's that understanding? Where's the minerals at? Yeah? Because we bottled it to weaken Liverpool. This is the difference. Man United had the experience on that pitch through a core. Rashford, Bruno Fernandes, Varane, Wan-Bissaka. McTominay's got experience. And you can bring in your Ganachos. You can bring in your Amads. The same with Liverpool. 
Elliot's Joneses, but you've got Van Dykes, you've got Sallers, bro. You've got experience in that team, Robinson, Trent Alexander, Arnold, bro. Yeah. We don't have that balance. And that's why we're a long way from Lavazza, we're a long way from Starbucks, bro. Where we're not going to compete, bro. Yeah. We're not going to compete at that level. For a long, long time. So all you trust the process merchants, yeah? You're in the bin, you're in the woods. You're deluded, mate. You're gone. Because like I say, Mason Mount will land the minerals. And the fact that he is celebrating and cheering the crowd because he knows what it means. Manchester United Liverpool fucking rattles me, bro. Yeah? But he's in that red shirt wearing a number seven, all right? And we got fucking what? Kids on our, in our club where he's a kid still, and he should be in our football club, who's part of Chels and Cobham boy. It's a disgrace. Then you've got Kai Havertz landing at Arsenal, bro. They won us trophies. They won us Champions League, Super Club, Old Cup, mate. Top four was an ease with these players, right? Look at these players we've got. Can't even get top four. Can't even get out of mid-table, bro. Yeah? And then you get Klopp. And let's play Klopp. Let me show you. Let's, let's play Klopp. Let's mud the veneer merchant because I'm sick of this guy, bruv. The guy cries. That's all he does is cry, bruv. Yeah? All this does is, all this geezer does is cry, mate. Yeah? So let's bring him up. Let's all laugh at him. Yeah? Let's show what rattled is. Intensity is the name of your game. So how come it became so difficult in, in, in extra time? A bit of a dumb question, I have to say, because when you see us that often, you can if you never saw us, and you can ask how can they have more resources. Um, we played, I don't know how many games recently, I don't know how many games United exactly played. That's sport. Yeah. I'm pretty really disappointed about that question, but you thought obviously it's good. So too many games, so oh, I don't think that. Ah, oh, come on. You are obviously not in a great shape, and I have no nerves for you. Oh, I have a question talking about I really what's wrong with you? What do you what, what, what did you want now? How come you're so pro provocative? <laughs> the media darlings, old Liverpool, you'll never walk alone. Yeah, let's have it right. We walk alone because we're Chelsea. Yeah, we walk on our own. Yeah, and we land down minerals. You, you, veneer merchant, crying like that. Like you're not getting all the sympathy. Do you know how many decisions that, that, that geezer got away with in that game? All right. Let's have it right. Let's say it for what it is. You got muddied by Manchester United, who are nowhere near what they used to be. All right. They're still above Chelsea. Can you believe it? Because they got experience to fall back on. That's how the game goes. But we're, these clowns don't understand what experience is. They don't understand what football culture and an identity and what it means to be Chelsea. And they don't know nothing, bruv. They're clueless, bruv. They're just AI scouting merchants. Data FC matrix merchants, bruv. Yeah? But listen, veneer merchant, you are walking alone, my son. <laughs> and I don't need veneers to smile, mate. I don't need veneers to smile. Let's have it right. Um, but listen, let's have it right. Yeah? He's crying like that already, yeah? Because that one hurt. They're, they're, they're literally in a title race. Now, what's happened to the quad? The quad's in the mud, bro. The only quad you're getting on is a, literally a physical quad that you start the little engine. You go in the, go in, go in the park somewhere. Go in the park in, in Liverpool somewhere, in Scouseland, and, and drive around with your, your little Liverpool badges on your quads, mate. Because that's the only quad that you're going to see, a quad bike, bro. Yeah, let's have it right. Um, so, yeah, the baby quad, sorry. It was a baby quad because they're not in the Champions League. Um, but let's have it right. He goes, I'm tired. He's tired. What's he tired? Who made him tired, bruv? Who made the video merchant tired? Pep Guardiola, bruv. Made him tired. Let's have it right. Yeah. That's the reality of the situation. Klopp's running away from Liverpool, mate. He's running away. He's now run away from another FA Cup final. Uh, 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 sorry, semi-final. Um, to have the chance he could, would have played Coventry to get in the final and maybe play Chelsea or Manchester City to have it right. But he's not going to get that now. So he's got to focus on Europa League and he's got to focus on uh, title charge. Let's see if he does it. But the moan about, look how many games we played. We've all played the same amount of games, bruv. Everyone's played these games, you know. Um, our excuse, there's no excuse to Chelsea. We play one game a week, bruv. You know, we're not in Europe uh, and yet we're still in the mud. So, yeah, people could go, oh, I can't banter. But I, I banter our owners. I banter our condition because of them. So I've got every right to speak, bro. You know what I'm saying? No one can banter me. Um, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I can't stand the dippers and they got muddied. Um, and let's have it right. 
They deserve everything that they get. And we're drinking their tears all day long, bro. They'll cry and cry and cry, Liam Gallagher, cry merchants, bro. That's all they are, mate. Yeah. They did. They conceded a call of goals. <laughs> Uh, it tastes good, doesn't it? Tastes good. And now Man United look like they're going to go into the final. They're going to beat Coventry. Let's have it right. Um, and they're probably going to get in the final. They've got a great chance of winning the FA Cup. You know what I'm saying? That's the reality situation, bruv. That's the reality situation. You know what I'm saying? Listen, he did. That journo stood his ground and fair play to him. But the reality situation is... Um, you know, Klopp is a crybaby. He got done. He got done, and that's and that's it. And and we're gonna we're gonna play this because I love this. Let's drink these minerals in, everyone. Everyone drinking these minerals. Everybody drinking the minerals. Let's go. Why is he not playing? Why is he not playing? He won't play. Can you believe it? He won't play. Doesn't want to play. Oh, what a shambles that is. What a shambles that is. Let's try again. Let's try again. Because we need to get this up, bruv. Yeah, this is what I love. I love this. I love bantering them, man. Absolute wrong ends, bruv. Yeah. All right, we ready? Let's go. Everybody smash to pieces that like button. Every single one of you smash to pieces the like button. If you haven't subscribed to Minnows FC, make sure you do subscribe to Minnows FC. Respect to everyone in here. Uh, I think it's this one. No, it's not that one. We're having a bit of a merry here, aren't we? We're having a mare, bruv. We are having an absolute mare, bruv. Fucking hell. Oh, it's got to be this one, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Here we go. Let's go. I love it. I love them in the mud, bruv. There's nothing that makes me feel so good, bruv, than, than dippers in the mud, bruv. Yeah? Let's have it right. Love it, bruv. Absolutely love it. It's exactly what we need, bruv. A bit of therapy, bruv. You know what I'm saying? Swole Sky was laughing, bruv. And so was Robinson. He was laughing as well. Robertson, sorry. He was laughing. What are you laughing at? You got muddied, bruv. You know what I'm saying? They got muddied. That's what we love, bruv. Respect to everyone in here. Let's go. Big out of Jamie says, Disaster, he must have a bet on himself. Ivan Tony Stoll, he's up there with Dr. Timberlands for the worst signing. Sanchez, the gully merchant, an embarrassment. I mean, not wrong. You can imagine if he's doing that, bruv. Yeah. Oh, man, he's done a William Gallus, but in, in actual reality, he's done it. Oh, mate. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, the guy, he must have cement in his boots like the cement boot rat. Oh, disaster, disaster, bruv. Um, nowhere near John Terry, absolute insult. And Sanchez is nowhere near Chelsea level. He should be number one. Petrovic is clear, but we still need a number one goalkeeper. And that's a fact. And we still we spent one billion and we ain't got a, a world-class goalkeeper. We haven't got a world-class uh, number 10. We haven't got a world-class striker. <laughs> Trust the process. Trust the process. Um, what has Sterling done to start over Mudrick? I know Mudrick has had poor games, but Sterling is an experienced player making unacceptable mistakes lately. I think he is, yeah. I mean, I don't disagree. Sterling hasn't been good. I'm not lying, but I don't agree with booing the, the geezer. You have to support your players. Um, and let's be real, what players have been consistent at Chelsea Football Club that we've signed, that you can say hold the standards at a, at a top level. 
Cole Palmer's the only one. If you take Cole Palmer out of our team, I don't see any creation and I don't see where the goals are coming from. And he's not even playing number 10. So that's a very, that's a worrying factor, bruv. Yeah, it's very concerning that the way that this squad's been assembled by AI Robot and Data FC merchants from these clowns, that if you take Cole Palmer out of our team, who's actually playing every single game that we play, as is Casado, as is Enzo, who's just suspend, suspended uh, yesterday, all right? They're playing every game. They're not getting any rest. They're not being rotated because Poch can't afford to rotate because there's nothing to rotate with of any level that's up to them. And they're not even at the top world-class level at all. They're still all high potential. So, yeah, I mean, Sterling, you've got to rely on some sort of experience. Look at Man United. Man United don't beat Liverpool if they don't have experience in that team. They're a bunch of kids. They lose that game, bro. All right? And Liverpool didn't... What happened to the veneer merchant? Why didn't he bring on all these kids to win the game? Didn't need to. He took the piss out of Pochettino, took the piss out of the Clown Lakes and Chelsea by putting on kids in the Carabao Cup final because he still felt that we, they were still going to beat us. And they did. All right? That's what winds me up, bruv. No respect whatsoever at Chel for Chelsea. Because people are looking at us going, yeah, we'll have them. We'll have them. Uh, Jamie says, if the owners are so determined to build a team of kids, at least sign some good ones, not some random ones with zero proven pedigree. They won't even profit um, of them because uh, uh, they're being sent back on loans. Back on loans. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's facts, bro. Moreira, Santos, uh, Cassidy. I mean, what are we doing here? Leave them on loan. No, the loan clubs didn't even want them. They're not buying world-class players of under the age of 23 years old, which is what they're saying they're going to do. They're not doing that. They're lying. They're basically outright liars, bruv. They're using PR happy meals to fool everyone. People buying into this nonsense. Um, what's his name, bruv? Kwasako, he says, everything needs a process karma. Yeah, but there's one thing having a process and one thing thinking about the now for the process and the process that they're implementing ain't ever going to work, mate. So it's not a process. It's a fugazi. There's no process at Chelsea. Their process is to make money. I like this question. You get three signings of your choice in the summer. Who do you get? Well, we need more than three. But if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get three players, I'd get Frankie De Jong. I mean, are these players that are available? They've got to be players that are available as well. And uh, I mean, Frank, you might be ready. I'll take Bastoni. I like Bastoni at the back. Um, we need a whole core, bruv. What are we talking about? Three players. I'd still go and get Oblak as a goalkeeper or Manion. Like one of those two. I'd get Bastoni. But apparently we're getting an 18-year-old from Lille to replace Thiago Silva as a criminal fence. Uh, Frankie de Jong. Um, I'd get a Musiala and up front. You're looking at Vahilovic, um, Guacareres from Sporting. And obviously Osman's in there. But we haven't tackled our wingers. You know, I think Musiala could play that 10 role very, very well. And, I, and um, from what I'm hearing, he's going to go Man City anyway. So you ain't going to get him. Um, but roughly, I'm looking at that sort of level of player across the board, bruv. But listen, people, were, listen, you got can't forget FFP as well. FFP is going to play a big role. There could be points deductions. We could be set up for another failure season next year. And where do you draw the line? Where are you going to say enough's enough, bruv? Yeah? And Man City have their charges. Until proven guilty, they're still where they are, bruv. You know, they're still the benchmark. And we are nowhere near Manchester City. And that's a fact. We're nowhere near Manchester City, bruv. Yeah. Blimey, yeah, you're right. Bald hog put Maguire as a striker, bruv. And he had been, uh, Fernandez playing centre back. And that actually, actually helped them, believe it or not, because they could play at the back, 
right? But Fernandez was carrying some sort of injury, bruv, and he still led like a captain with experience at 31 years old to fight to the very end to try and win this game. That is what we lack. We don't have that at Chelsea. We don't have it. And the only one that can fight like that is Thiago Silva, and he's been exiled. That tells you everything you need to know about our circumstances at Chelsea Football Club, bruv. Yeah? Let's have it right. And what points deductions will we get? And not only that, where, where are you going to draw the draw the line when you sell Conor Gallagher, bruv? Conor Gallagher's going to go, Broha's going to get, what, four million for, for Broha. Matson's gone, who's balling out of Dortmund, bruv. What a surprise. Um, who else is there? Lewis Hall, he's going to go get money for him, profit. Trev Chalabar, he's going to get to get profit for him. They're going to get... Obviously, you're hearing Meatloaf Bowley's loving trips to Saudi uh, to try and ship off uh, the, the cement boot rat and all these players. So once you sold these players, all they're going to do is try and balance the books and then go and buy what they can only buy is 20-year-olds or under. Because they're cheap, they're low wages, and that's their model anyway. You know what I'm saying? That's their model, bro. That's what they're looking at. And that's what they're going to go for. You know what I'm saying? So listen, like I say, make sure you get all your waterproofs on because we're going to be having a lot of their tears crying on us, bro. You know what I'm saying? Falling on us. It's going to be raining. All their tears are going to be raining on us, bro. Yeah, because us on the Minnows FC, we're not blinded by this nonsense and this PR happy meals. All right. And something else came out today uh, from Matt Law. Uh, and it came out, it says Chelsea Boos leave players and their representatives fearing they might be the club's next public no enemy number one. No, public enemy number one is Clown Lake upstairs. Blue Co 22, Mid Co Limited. Yeah. Egg Barley, Siri Merchant, Meatloaf Bowley. Jose Felici for Gaziano, bruv. Yeah. Wise, Mark Walters. These are the guys. Jurisic, the CEO, rat. Yeah. All these guys. These are the ones that are public enemy number one for us on the Minnows FC and should be for all the supporters because everything that we are experiencing, everything we're going through is based upon their decisions, their Clown Lake model, their Epstein FC, Kindergarten FC model. That is what it's all based upon, guys. Yeah. Literally, bruv. That is what it is. It's literally crime lake. You're not wrong. It is crime lake because it's criminal, bruv. Yeah? This is who the owners, the owners are the ones to blame. Anyone blaming anyone else, blaming the gaffer, blaming players. You're delusional. You're a long way from about super grammar, as we all know, bruv. And you need to get with a program, bruv, because you, let's have it right. You're at the you're at the train stop and you ain't getting on no gravy train. Yeah, that gravy train even gonna, gonna come for you if you don't get with a program, bro. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? Maybe get off that pit stop some pit stop somewhere else where the gravy train actually goes, and then you might get on it and be able to land the minerals. But unfortunately, you can't be doing that. You know what I'm saying? You can't be doing that nonsense. And we've won a game and we've gone to semi-final. And I still land it for what it really is. You know what I'm saying? Because everyone else, they're pretty much in the pocket of these clowns. Um, a lot of these, all these brown envelope journos, we know how it goes. They're the ones that are uh, culprits and they're the blame for the situation we've got at Chelsea Football Club because they participated in everything that happened and everything that's happening at our football club to allow these clowns to implement what they did and what they've done. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. It is what it is. But this, this is the start of something magical. Yeah? This is the start. This is what, you see, when you look at the Strasbourg Ultras, bruv, and they're starting a protest, it's coming this way. Poor little clown legs, the little Siri merchant, Jose Fulgaziano, and the meatloaf bowley there. Oh, that's going to dent your ego, isn't it? Get them out, bruv. Get them out. Sell this club. Let's have it right. Yeah? And you see there, you see on the Chelsea uh, advertisement in the ground, bruv, you see Don Roman Abramovich there. Let's have it right. Yeah. This is how we get our club back by getting these out, bruv. I was sent these guys. I was sent these that are floating around now. All these stickers are floating around. So respect to those who make them. Let's have it right. 
That was put in the ground. All the ultras asking, that was put in the ground, mate. Where you go and get your drinks, where you go in the gates. Let's have it right. Don't play around with the Chelsea supporters. It's as simple as that. And you are playing a dangerous game, you clowns. Yeah? Playing a very dangerous game. And you're losing. You're losing. You know what I'm saying? But that's that 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 makes me feel great. When I see that, I thought, this is it, bruv. This is the start of where we need to go to get to where we need to go. 31st of March, Strasbourg are going to land the minerals, all the ultras, yeah? We need to do the same. We need to do the same. And I stand by it. And I will not go against what I know, what I believe, and what I see. Because let's have it right. As always, we see things they'll never see. Yeah. Shout out Chelsea old boys. Our ultra. Our Minnows FC ultra. Our Chelsea ultra, bruv. Yeah. We see things that they still don't see and will never see until they get on the Minnows FC gravy train. And they ain't going to do that. Because they're too, they're full of pride. They're too stubborn. They want to go with their normal clickbait merchantry. Well, cool, do that. But don't cry when it's too late. Let's have it right. Don't cry when it's too late. Listen, you can't blame Roman Abramovich for these charges, mate. That's a PR stamp. PR happy meals, yeah. No chance, bruv. Yeah, no chance. Right. No chance whatsoever. Roman Abramovich has got no play in any of this, these transfer bans or, or charges or points deductions. This is all on the clowns and them going to spend in 635 million in two windows with Meatloaf Bowley and Siri Merchant playing sporting director and they're still playing sporting director. They've still got the carry in Stanley now who they brought in and Stuart Little making absolute shocking decisions 24-7 based on AI scouting, bruv, all right, and Data FC recruiting like they've never rec they've never recruited for elite football club. These clowns never run a football club. They don't know about football. All right, they don't know what they're watching. They don't care. Everyone remembers me like Bowley in the ground playing on a on a on a computer game on his phone. Realised the cameras on him and put the phone away because he's not interested. He was in negotiations with Declan Rice and Mud Muff, Declan Rice and his family because he was on his phone the whole time. Didn't even, didn't even speak. What a mug. Yeah. That's not showing ambition. That's not showing that you want to sign a player, that you want to build a, a legacy and you want to make Chelsea dominant. It's all PR lies from these clowns, yeah? Let's have it right. I guarantee it, bro. Stand by it all day long. All day long, yeah? Clown late out, yeah? They're the root of the problem. They're the ones to blame. And nothing's changing. And I guarantee that as well. Let's have it right. Until the Chelsea supporters... Turn it around and we continue with all these all these lovely, lovely things flying about now. You know, all the minerals are landing now. We've got all this at, at the bridge now. So, yeah, let's keep that going. Because we guarantee that we want these clowns out, bro. Yeah, that's what we want, actually. You know what I'm saying? We should get the Ronald McDonald stickers. You're not wrong, bro. Uh, big up, uh, Rebel Rising. Minnows FC Ultra member as well. He says, the only realistic way uh, would be like at United, giving someone else the sporting roles. I don't think that they will leave without payment. Listen, Pochettino won't leave until he gets sacked and he gets paid out. The same will go, the same went for Jellyfish Potter and that's why they both signed NDAs where they can't speak out after. Poch is, Poch is trying to speak out and he's doing it through, uh, uh, you know, in an articulate way. Where people think he's trying to mud everyone, he's not. He's trying to tell you what's going on in the situation. He's doing the best he can with all the tools that he's been given. These tools are rusted, bruv. All right, some of them don't even fucking work. All right, and then on top of that, you've got Jellyfish Potter saying, "I'm not the problem." Right? He's let they've let us know. All right, in the best way they can without making it too literal because they've signed NDAs. So Thiago Silva won't sign an NDA, and that's why he's been exiled, bruv. A lot of these players that left the football club, there was an NDA put in their contracts that were shit contracts and weren't valuable contracts, all right, that these players won't sign. All the young players that sign up a football club and all these players that sign up a football club all have signed an NDA, everyone. So they are basically sold out their soul to these clowns. They can use their them and say and use them for whatever PR they want and they can't turn around and go, I didn't say that because they're breaching their contracts. 
All right. So when you hear a chill world come out and go, this Carabao Cup final is as big as the Champions League final for us. You know, you know, Chile wouldn't say that. He knows the levels between Champions League and Carabao Cup. I mean, it's fucking worlds apart, bruv. What are we doing here? One's the pinnacle, holy ground. The other one's bottom of the barrel, bruv. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the reality is, yeah, Kareem and Stanley won't leave as well. You know what I mean? Until he's sacked. They've got to be sacked. The reality is they're giving power to clowns, more clowns, but clown yes-men clowns. You know, anyone who says yes to these lot, they'll employ you and you get an NDA merchantry stuck on you as well. But let's have it right. That's the, that's the reality situation, bruv. You know what I'm saying? That is the reality, bruv. No one's got the bollocks to come out and say it for what it is. I do. Eunice is doing it. All right. Goonies started to do it. You know what I'm saying? So everyone needs to everyone needs to start speaking the truth, no matter what, win, lose, draw. It doesn't make a difference, bro. The, the, the reality and the severity of the situation is still at Chelsea Football Club, and it remains. So until that's rectified, which I think is too late to rectify it, these clans have gone too far in the mud. Too, they've spent too much money. They've built a model that is not going to work, all right? And that's the reality situation, bro. You know what I'm saying? Look at the levels of celebration where you got a young kid through the academy or that they bought or whatever who's been loaned out, come back to score a winning goal, to have the experience, to win a big limbs game like that. One of the best games in FA Cup history at this moment in time. It will be up there, one of the greatest, yeah? All right? Where is that game for Chelsea? Where's those moments for Chelsea? We don't have those moments. We don't have any of those moments. You got Cole Palmer doing this after every single celebration. It's just like, there's no, there's no value in anything that we do anymore. You know what I'm saying? We're still mid-table. We're still not looking like we're going to win any silverware. We're still not going to get Europe. So I don't understand where people are propping all this. How are you propping this? Because that tells me you're, you've got no standards. Our standards were set by Don Roman. Very difficult to implement those standards and very difficult to hold those standards. And these standards have been just de destroyed. Literally, as soon as these clowns walk through the door and you're sponsoring it. So you're a, you're a piss poor fucking melt, bruv. You're what you are. is a brown envelope. It's what you are. Oh, but I back the plan. Do you not understand? By backing everything that these clowns are doing, you're backing these clowns. And everything these clowns are doing is wrong. It's against football. It's against football heritage. It's blasphemous to football, bruv, what these guys are doing. This is just pure money making. That's all it is. They come to milk our football club. They don't care about our football club. They literally have no uh, sentiment or affection or affiliation or love or care for our football club because everything they've done tells you that anyway. And the fact that you're sponsoring it tells me you're fucking one of them as well. You might as well be dressed as a fucking clown. Yeah, so a bit right. I get rattled, bruv. I get rattled with it. There's too much this toxic positivity flying about, you know? All you Mason Mount agenda merchants, oh, how did he change the game? Go and watch your own fucking two eyes, what he did. It doesn't mean just making an assist or a goal. It's what you complement to the team, what positions you get in, how you direct your teammates, what leadership qualities you show. The guy ain't fit and the guy's been out four months, all right, thrown into this game of this magnitude. What the fuck have our players done to show any of that level? Nothing. And you're right, shout out, Michael. It is the carbon copy of last season. We haven't changed. We haven't developed. We haven't even gone up a few places, bruv. So it is what it is, bruv. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. All you agenda merchants, you're in the mud. You always will be in the mud, yeah? And you're in the mud in my woods. So have it right. Big up to everyone in here. Smash the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Tomorrow night, I'm going on with Eunice at 8 o'clock. So make sure you tune in with me and Eunice tomorrow night. We're going to land the minerals and say it for what it is because it needs to be said continuously. So make sure you're, you're tuned in for that one. And as always, guys, I want you all to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and put all your comments down below because let's have it right, YouTube trying to cancel us on the Minerals FC. And I am in the process of setting up Rumble. 
So we're going to get on that as well. I said I'd do it, and I'm going to do it, bro. Yeah? Respect to everyone. Love to everyone. As always, guys, you know the deal, bruv. We see things they'll never see at the Chels, at the Minnows FC. And uh, as always, guys, I'll see you tomorrow night. And uh, comments down below, like, subscribe, all that jazz. We're not a long way from the Super Gamer. We're not a long way from Starbucks. We're not a long way from the true Chelsea and the standards at Chelsea Football Club. That's what we are. And we're here to make sure it stays and it's set, bruv. Yeah? Let's have it right. Yeah? Respect to everyone at the Chelsea, at the Minnows FC. Let's go.